Welcome back sci-fi fans, this is Greg from Greg Review Sci-Fi and today we're going to review The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. If you stayed to the end of this video, we have some bonus content only for YouTube um, that I think you'll really enjoy. Now The Forever War was originally published in Analog Magazine in 1972 and in the foreword uh, Haldeman really kind of goes over what parts of the story were published when, and it was really helpful in kind of putting the pieces of this, of the uh, history of this book together. Now, if you watch my channel uh, for any length of time, you know I typically review modern sci-fi books. The Forever War is really a classic book that I thought that I had to read, and I'm really glad that I did. The Forever War is essentially a love story. And I know that there are some of you out there right now that are blown off of your chair, you're at your computer desk, and, and, and you just your head just exploded. And I totally understand that. You're screaming at the screen, the Forever War is the quintessential military sci-fi. Or it's, it's military sci-fi slash space opera. I, I get it, and you're, you're totally right. The Forever War is absolutely a military sci-fi, but its end, its core, is a love story. Essentially, the story is following William Mandela as he's forced to, you know, he's, he's drafted into the military. And he's drafted through what's called the Elite Constri Conscription Act. And it's the craziest thing, basically, this in this book, the Elite Conscription Act it drafts all of the smartest people on Earth, and in, in Mandela's case, turns them into infantry. Right, just just creates a, a unit and and puts them in battle suits and off to the slaughter. Well, as you can imagine, wouldn't be much of a book if our protagonist gets grinded up by some crazy aliens. And the reason that uh, they're drafted is because the Earth is in battle with the Torrens. The funny thing about this book is, because it was written in 1972, the 1990s were the future. So it kind of starts right around then. And, and in, the, in the book, Joe Haldeman says, he says that he wanted it to feel, or he wanted people in the book that was relatively believable that they had fought in a previous war. So that's why I picked that date. Um, and you have to kind of get past that originally, but it but you get past it really quick. And the reason is, is because the, the method of faster than light travel is through these things they found in space called collapsars. And you can Google what a collapsar is. There's it's actual real thing in astronomy. But in this book, what a collapsar is is essentially, a, it's listed as a perfect sphere three kilometers in which you can go through and instantaneously get to another point in space. So you go in and collapse or go out. Think of it like a, a wormhole that uh, has multiple directions. So you go in it the same exact speed, you pop out, and the different angles send you to different places. At least that's how I understood it, so. Um, the, the crazy thing is, is they don't have faster than light travel getting to the Collapsar. So they're subject to relativity. So time, essentially time dilation. So time, time in the spaceships traveling from Earth to the Collapsar, from the Collapsar to wherever they're going, moves, moves at what they consider normal speed. But on Earth, tens, hundreds, or thousands of years have passed. This gives this, you know, this timey wimey uh, element is adds something special to this story, and um, what it adds is that once you leave, you're gone. You know, you're the likelihood that your parents are still alive, the likelihood that you're that you're ever going to see anyone you ever know is slim. So at first, 
they, you know, they convince you, oh, only a, you know, you only have to put in two years subjective time, right? And they said, and the estimate is that you're going to be gone from Earth for 10 years. Well, that's not so bad. But in reality, they keep finding these collapsars further and further away. And in the war, it's expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding. So it's, as you'll find if you read this book, it just doesn't really happen like that in reality. Now, Mandela, uh, when he starts in the military, when he's drafted, he meets Mary Gay Potter. And they're in the same unit, essentially the whole book. They split up at the end um, for, you know, they just get assigned to different things. And I'm not going to tell you the, the, the ending of the book because there's a lot to it. And uh, I couldn't, I don't think I could spoil it even if I wanted to. I, it really is a multi-dimensional ending, which is very cool. But uh, this book, it, it addresses an unbelievably an unbelievable amount of things it addresses cultural changes on earth it addresses can you imagine if every time you got in your car and you drove to work the technology was 50 years more advanced than when you left or when you drove from work to a customer you were 50 years more advanced than the customer because the customer hadn't, uh, you know, you were meeting them for the first time. They had left at an earlier point in their history, right? So when you're out there fighting, when, when Mandela's ship and his team and his crew, his unit, whatever you call it, is out there fighting, they're meeting the Torrens at different points in their history, right? So they'll meet a ship that's at the beginning of the war and the Torrens won't even know they're at war. Or they'll meet a ship that's been recently launched, sent through a collapsar, meet them, and they're hundreds of years more advanced with super advanced weaponry and you know battle techniques and tactics that no one's ever seen, and and it's it's really just a dynamic that uh, uh, it blows me away. It really is so well thought of, and the book could have been ten times bigger, but it uh, it got done what it needed to get done in the time that it got done. Wow, that's a sentence. Now, let's get to the uh, review. So the story I give 5-5, five, five, I mean, I've been gushing about it for, for five minutes now. It is an amazing story. It's well thought out. I haven't read anything like it. Even, I mean, this, this thing could have been copied a hundred ways. Um, and I have not read anything that's even close. Not in the complexity. Some elements here and there. But uh, this book... It's it's really an amazing story. Now, the pace. Whenever you read a book of this age, what, what you'll notice, and, and it gets better, but what you'll notice is that uh, they start off slow. They build, right? They really take you through character development. They explain politics and things like that. And it's not just uh, Haldeman that does it, right? It's It's... It's worse as you get older, as you get as the books get older, right? So when you read a read a book from like the 30s, they spend three quarters of the book explaining the politics of how the spaceship got built. Then they build a spaceship and go blow something up. This is not that bad. It it's it starts off kind of explaining everything, and then you get to some fighting, and then you get uh, then you start to get to the real meat, right? They you know. William and Mary Gay really start to pair up, and you and you and, and then the the time dilation effects really start to pile up, and and that's when the meat of the story really gets going. Now, so so I give the pace uh, four out of five stars, which is still very good, right? It took, but it takes a minute to to get rocking. Originality, I give uh, classic books like this five out of five. I have no idea if they copied it off anyone or, or um, you know, there's some obscure book somewhere that, uh, that Haldeman read, read and, and stole a couple of ideas. I don't think so. This thing is pretty original. And uh, like I said, I still haven't read anything quite like it since. Technology, I gave it four out of five stars. 
The, coll the collapse ours are a natural phenomenon. I think it's like a layup as far as, um, as far as technology goes. Maybe back then, uh, you know, in 72 or, you know, the seventies, early, early seventies, late sixties, when Haldeman was writing this thing, it was, uh, more, uh, far future. Um, but, uh, but there's not, he, he does a really good job of not, uh, inventing a bunch of technology because that will age the book that will cause the book to to feel stale had had he not had he added a hundred years to the timing of it i don't i don't think there'd be any anachronisms in it at all from today till then so i give it a four out of five stars just because the technology didn't play a humongous role in this book. It's in there, you know, they wear battle suits, the battle suits progress over time, they're spaceships, you know, there's cool uh, different things like that. The aliens have bubble shields and a couple other cool things, but it's not, it's not a central point of, of, the, uh, of the story. So, um, so all in all, this gives, this gives uh, Forever War a 4.6 out of five stars. So four and a half out of five stars. It's an excellent book. It's one of the best books I've ever read and you, you should definitely read it. Now, if you stayed to the end of this video, I have a couple of special things to show you. Whenever I come across a book I really like, I like to have some sort of memorabilia, right? Because I, I buy the Kindle edition and it's nothing tangible. And I don't think going out and just buying the current paperback is really that interesting, collectible. Um, so, so what I did was uh, I got a couple of things that I think you're really going to like. Now, remember I said when Haldeman originally published this, it was an analog magazine. Now, the story in, in his book, in his uh, uh, letter in, in the beginning of the book, is that Ben Bova, the publisher of, of Analog Magazine at the time, or the editor, I should say, not the publisher, but the editor at the time, didn't like the middle piece of the book. So they cut it. And he, because Haldeman was a new author and, um, you know, was happy to get published, he kind of, you know, trusted Bova and Bova helped him edit. You can read it in the, in the foreword of the book. Uh, he, uh, he, he kind of al allowed it to happen. And that's how the book was essentially published for a long, long time. Now, the book that I read and the book that's out today is the original Haldeman version. He put it all back together, republished it how he thinks it should have been published. And that's what I read and that's what this review is on. But I did want to get a copy of the analog magazine that this book was originally published. Now it is serialized, so this is just the first one called Hero. And uh, very, I, I mean, I think it's very cool. Give you a look at it, and I'll give you a closer look here in just a second, but uh, get a little you can see Ben Bova Editor, Novelettes Hero by Joe Haldeman. It's on page eight. Let's see if we can find it. Something tells me that this page has been gone too many times. And there you go. And that's... That's uh, looks like imagery from maybe the last battle, the last battle that Mandela was was in. Just a guess though, because you know your your brain will build a different story. Okay, I'll just give you a closer look. 60 cents, give you a closer look at the back. Take three journeys into infinity just for 10, per 10 cents. 
Man, I wonder if I can mail that in now. <laughs> All right. Now, next on the list. So Haldeman said he had a chance to publish the middle piece of the Forever War. And he did. This is the middle missing piece that was not published originally in the book. And it's, it's called You Can Never Go Back, a new Forever War novella. But supposed to be originally in the book as originally written. Give you a little closer look at this guy. All right, amazing science fiction. November 1975, $1. You Can Never Go Back by Joe Haldeman. Very cool. So this was in this this uh, was in the review. This is a this was uh, uh, in the book that I read. As you can see here, outstanding new short novel. You can never go back. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, it's just six. Look at that little plus. People, people are like I like this one. Not so much that one. Not so much that one. Huh? Maybe we'll try. Maybe I'll read this one. I've never really read anything out of here. Um, it's funny. Thought his officers were celibate. He should sit down and have a long talk with Lieutenant Harmony. <laughs> I do remember that in the other book. There's a funny... Um, that's a funny part about uh, the Forever War that uh, I think that you'll find interesting if you read it. Uh, Haldeman really kind of attacks some social aspects pretty interestingly. 49th year of publication. Amazing. November 1975. That's not all. So, so this book, Far Horizons, was published in 1999, and it features a number of authors, including, as you can see here, Joe Haldeman. Now, what? Now, this this is a forever, right? It says the Forever War. If you look at it right here, and I'll give you a closer look in a second. So, what story is this? This is the story. This is Mary Gay's story. The time. She was, her and William were not with each other. They were not in the same unit. And at the end of the Forever War, you're going to see some, it, there's some interesting things that happen that make it so that this book, this novella, whatever's in here, the story, will be very appealing to you. Uh, this is a first edition, 1999, published. I don't know if there's a second edition. I got it on eBay for like three bucks. I have not read it yet, but I will, and I'll make a supplement video. I flipped through the first page or two of, the, of Mary Gay's story, and it was really interesting. It's the same story, but from her perspective, at least the beginnings of it, right? They're together in the beginning. And uh, super, super interesting idea. I'll say it that way. So Far Horizons. Edited by Robert Silverberg, so it's really just a book of a book of novellas by really popular artists or authors. One interesting thing in the front is it gives a shout out to Asimov, Heinlein, and Campbell. So that's uh, very cool. That's not it. So there's also some talk about, about a, 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 a Forever War movie. And I start to look at, well, are there other, 
are there other uh, Forever War items? Is there a cartoon or, or anything like that? And it turns out that there actually is a graphic novel series. And I have not read this either, but I imagine I flipped through it and it looks relatively like the same story. But it's a very, very cool um, adaption. So if you think, you know, this thing came out in, the Forever War came out in the 70s, and you're a, a child or a, or, a, or a person of the 90s, when this, when this was published, it might rekindle the book. Let me get some closer, get you closer to this. There you go. You can see the insides. Forever War, Private Mandela. This is interesting. It uh, a couple of uh, pictures from when Haldeman was in Vietnam, which I, which is a which is an interesting story in, it, in and of itself. But that's what the art looks like. I think it's, uh, I think it's very good. It looks, it looks interesting. Let's see if we can... I have not read it yet, but it's on my list of things to look through. This is interesting. When it was departure day, I remember it as if it was yesterday. It's funny. It's the shuttle. You would think. You would think that uh, this is what I mean by no invention of technology in the review. Is it really was not super forward looking as far as technology. I wish we could find a collapse R and go go to other worlds, but uh, it doesn't look that way. So I hope you like that bonus content, and if you did, if you liked the video, subscribe on YouTube, look me up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under Greg Review Sci-Fi, and there's also a Greg Review Sci-Fi podcast with, with uh, different material, uh, still the same reviews, but uh, different podcast bonus content. So if you want to listen to reviews in the car or at work or whatever with your headphones while you're jogging. I don't think you'll listen to my reviews while you're exercising in case you're, you know, trying to slow it down. But uh, um, the podcast is available. Feel free to check it out. I'll put links and everything in the description. And uh, let me know what you think. Leave me some comments. And again, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.